to talk about that you complained about really quick just very quick what um, what what did you complain about it was hot okay did somebody else say something that they complained about Aaron that Jeffrey took your toy now how many of you let's, let's make this easier how many of you have been around somebody else that was complaining it's a lot easier to think about other people that were complaining, right? So, we've been around other people complaining. We've complained ourselves. Does it make us feel any better when we complain? No. We can say, oh, it's so hot. I wish it wasn't hot. Does it make it any cooler? No, it doesn't make it any cooler. So, um, it doesn't make us feel any better when we complain, and in fact, doesn't it make, like if you're around somebody that's complaining, no. do you want to be around them anymore if yeah. they're always complaining? No. no. You think, why am I around that person complaining? Oh. Or, you might say, you might want to get away from them, or what might happen? Have you ever been around somebody that was complaining and you start thinking, yeah, and you start complaining too? No. You start thinking, no. it's bad. And then everybody's complaining. Complaining is more contagious than the coronavirus. Yeah. It is. It's more yeah. contagious. Yeah. So, today, we have been, our verse has been about complaining, but the last two weeks we haven't been talking about complaining, have we? But today, we are going to read, we're learning from the Bible about when our verse, our lessons come from Numbers 10, 11, and 12. So our verse is right in the middle of our lessons. At the beginning of our lesson today, Ithamar and Eliezer, and you might not remember who they are, but they are the sons of the priest. Ithamar and Eliezer, they got the, sil the two silver trumpets out, and they blew on them with a special signal. Now, who remembers... What is supposed to happen when the two priests blow on the silver trumpets with the special signal? See if you can remember. Don't say it yet. Let's just see if we have one person thinks, two people thinks they remember. Silas thinks he remembers. Aaron might remember. We talked about it a couple times. We've talked about it at least two times in the last four weeks. Ian thinks he remembers. What is supposed to happen when the two priests get the silver trumpets out and blow on them with the special signal? You raised your hand first, so we'll let you try. That means they have to move. That's right. What else would happen that would that was a signal that it was time to move? The cloud. The, the cloud that showed the presence of God would raise up. So, what did that mean? If they blew the trumpets, that means the cloud had raised up and it was heading out and it was time to move. The children of Israel had been in the same spot for almost a year. And while they were there, they built the tabernacle, remember? And they learned about all the sacrifices there. They numbered all the people, and then they figured out exactly where they're supposed to live, right? Last week, we talked about how the tabernacle's in the middle, and Judah and two others were on this side, and Reuben and two others are on this side, and Dan and two others are on this side, and Ephraim and Manasseh. 
and Benjamin are on this side, and the and the the God had a special order. So they blew the trumpets, and what do you think happened? The high priest went in. They covered up the furniture in the tabernacle, right? And the Kohathites they came in and they put the furniture on their shoulder, right? They didn't hold it with their arms. Poles went through and they put the furniture on their shoulders. And then the Merarites and the Gershonites, they started taking down the curtains and the boards and the bars and they loaded them on their wagons, right? And then the first three tribes of Israel got behind their flags and their banners and they started walking and following the cloud through the wilderness. And it was a wilderness. It was dry. There was not grass like this. Yeah. Mrs. Volger, you remember being in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. It's like a little piece of grass here and there. Rocks, dry. It was not fun. But, and it was hot. God, the cloud was there, and the first three tribes went, and then the Levites went with the tabernacle building part, and covering. Then three more tribes went. Then the, the, the Kohathites went, carrying the furniture on their shoulders. Then three more tribes went. And three more tribes went after that. Everybody went in the order that God had told them to go. And they were marching. They were, they were probably a little bit excited at first because now they were finally moving. And where were they going to? Where were they going to? When they blew the trumpets, it's time to head out and go toward where? To Israel, Canaan. And what is there another word for that? Yeah. Another phrase? Two yeah. words? There is. What is it? The promised land. That's right. It's the promised land. Who promised the land? God promised the land to the Israelites, and the promised land was a special land. There was food, and it was rained on. There was plenty there. It was a special place, and now they were on their way to the promised land, and they went, and they went, and they went, and they went, and they stopped, and then the next day they kept going, and then they stopped, and the next day they kept going, and as they were going, you know what started happening? Complaining. I don't know if somebody said, wow, it's hot up here. There's nothing wrong with saying it's hot. But then, they started complaining. Maybe they said, why are we going this way? Why is Moses taking us this way? Isn't there a better way than this? Look, at there's hardly even a path here. We've got like these big rocks to go over. And what's going on? They started complaining. And they kept complaining. After three days, they were complaining still. And the Bible, right at that instant... The Bible says, and when the people, what does the Bible say? And when, say it with me. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. So the Lord heard them complaining about the way they were going. Here he was leading them. They, they were following him. But they were complaining. Yeah. And he was leading them to the promised land. Yeah. He was. And, but they were complaining, and it kindled, it started up his anger. And the Bible says that while they were complaining, God sent burning fires into the outsides of the camp. All of a sudden, just out of nowhere, a fire started. And they went and tried to put it out. You think they could put that fire out? Yeah. No. Nope. They couldn't. They couldn't. And then there was another one. They went to put that fire out, and they couldn't get it out. What did they do? They went to Moses and said, Moses, there's fires all around the camp. Cry out to God. Pray to God and ask him to stop them for us. And he, Moses prayed to God, and God stopped the fires just as fast as yeah. he started them. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we know that God sent them. Right? Okay, Jeffrey, yeah. let him. I can handle him. He's doing okay. I know. Yeah, I know you know. So, they were complaining about the way they were going, and God sent the fires, and they gave it a special name. Then, you'd think they kind of shaped up and started acting right. 
well, through the camp, there started another thing. They started complaining about their food. Have you ever complained about the food your mom made for supper? Yeah. Sometimes, like, why are we having this again? Yeah. Oh, I don't like it whenever we have this. Well, what food did the children of Israel have? Does anybody remember the food that they had? Do you remember the name of it? Silas, do you remember the name of it? No? Avery, do you remember the name? Manna. Is that what you were going to say? It was manna. Now, manna was the food they had. And they had manna today. And they had manna yesterday, right? And they had manna the day before, and the day before, and the day before, and the day before. Except every seventh day they didn't have manna, but they had manna to eat because God gave them enough <coughs> manna on the sixth day to last all the way through the seventh day. And so now it was... They were like 14, like over a year of manna every yeah. day. Yeah. yeah, a year of manna every day. You think you would get tired of having manna every day? Yeah. Every day. Yes. Mom goes out, gets, gets, go gets the manna off the ground, and some days she grinds it, some days she pounds it, adds oil to it. But every day, could you imagine coming home from school, and Mom says, guess what's for dinner? And you don't have to guess. What is it? Manna. And the next day, you're out tending the sheep, and you come back from tending the sheep, and you say, so what's for dinner? And what's for dinner? Manna. 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 And they complain. They complain. They said, it's manna. Every day, it's manna. Man now, now what, why? Something that was special about the manna. It was the same every day, but what was special about the manna? Do you remember what was special about it? Yeah. What was special about it, um, uh, Allie? Yeah. It came from God. They didn't have to work. They didn't have to plow the ground and grow up anything. They walked out in the morning, and there it was. God sent it. They picked up all that they needed. They used it for the day, and they walked out the next morning, and there it was. God sent the manna. So that food, who gave them their food? God. And they were complaining about it. So who were they complaining against? God. God. One of them was like, I wish we were back in Egypt. In Egypt, in Egypt, we had melons, we had fish from the river, we had garlic and onions we had it all tasted so good and here all we have is manna 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 all we have is manna yeah. and manna. yeah and Moses was walking through the camp and he could hear people complaining and what do you think he was thinking oh great if I don't if we don't have manna how am I gonna feed all these people I can't take care of all these people and Moses cried to the Lord. God heard them complaining, right? Did they think God was listening to them? Yeah. No, yeah. they didn't. They, they thought they were just complaining in their house. But God could hear them. And Moses heard them. And Moses went to God and said, what are we going to do? Please take this burden off of me. And God said, here's what we're going to do. You tell them that I am going to send them meat to eat. Not for one day, not for two days, not for three days, not for just five days, not for only ten days, not even just twenty days, for a whole month. For thirty days in a row they are going to eat meat. They're going to eat so much meat they're going to be sick of it. It's going to come out their nostrils, God said. Now that's a lot of food. Moses said, there's two million people here, God, and we're in the middle of the wilderness. How are you going to do that? And God said, do you think that I don't have the power to do that? Now, what is, does God have all power? Yes. He does. Can yes. he put, can he bring meat? Can he spread a table? Can he yes. fix a feast yes. even in the wilderness when yes. there's nothing around? Yes. He can. And you know what he did? He did it. Moses told the people this, and the next day, the next day, a wind came through, 
and there was quail flying through their camp. Now, a quail is a bird. But when we think of birds, I think we mostly think of small birds. Quails are almost like the size of a chicken, but they fly. And they're good to eat. They taste good. So, these quail were flying through the camp, and they were just the size where you and the height that you could just reach out and grab one. And so, what do you think the people started doing? They hadn't seen meat in a year. So they started grabbing the quail. And God had sent the quail, and they grabbed a quail, and they grabbed another quail, and they grabbed a quail. Every single person grabbed as many quail as they could. And they kept grabbing quail all night long. They kept gathering quail. And the next day, they kept gathering quail. And then they put the quail, they, they killed the quail and put it out to dry, and they started eating. And they started eating, and they kept eating, and they kept eating, and God was angry with them. God gave them what they wanted, but he took away from them something, too. The Bible says they got sick. Many of them were sick because they had complained. God said, do you think when they grabbed those quail that they stopped and said, oh, thank you, God, for the food? No, they didn't. You know, being thankful is a good way to stop complaining. Yes, it is. So, but they didn't, they didn't thank God for the food. They didn't, they didn't say, wow, this is very, this is special, this is a miracle. They just started eating. They thought, like, finally I'm getting the meat that I want. And they ate, and they ate, and God sent illness into them. And many of them even died from it. So, then, not long after that, God... The, the, the big cloud went up from the tabernacle, and they went off, and they started marching, and they went to the next place, and the next place was called Hazaroth. And at the next place, so the people complained in chapter 10. They complained about the way that, they, that God was leading them. In chapter 11, they complained... In chapter 11, they complained about the food that God had been feeding them. And should we be complaining? We should learn from them not to complain. And in chapter 12, you know what? Two people in particular started complaining. They were going along, and one night, Aaron and Miriam, listen to those names, Aaron and Miriam went into Moses' tent, and they said, Moses, why do you think that you're so special? God has spoken to us. We, we, we don't have to always listen to whatever you say. And so what were they doing? Miriam and Aaron were complaining about Moses. Now, who can remember who Miriam was? Can anyone remember who Miriam was? Yeah. Way, way back, like 80 years before this. Can you remember? You know she was a redhead. How do you know she was a redhead? One of the pictures had her as a redhead. Okay. Maybe she was a redhead. I don't know that for sure, but the picture might. Have. Do you remember who who Miriam is, Silas? Who? That's Mary. That's a different lady. Okay, I got to tell you. Do you remember when Moses was a tiny, tiny baby and his mom put him in the Nile River and left his sister to watch over Moses? And the, the princess came and saw Moses in the river and then his sister came up and said, do you need somebody to take care of this little baby? You know who Moses' sister was? Yeah. Now we know, right? Miriam. Miriam was Moses' sister. And who was Aaron? So Miriam was a leader. People, especially the ladies, looked up to Miriam and listened to her. And who is Aaron? That guy there, right. But in our story, who is Aaron? Uh, Avery? He said, let my people go. He spoke with Moses to Pharaoh. And in the tabernacle, what did Aaron do? That the window. Silas? 
he would do the sacrifices. In fact, he was the high priest. So is he an important person? Yeah. He was an important person. Miriam was an important person. They both went to Moses and said, why do we always have to listen to you? They complained. And God heard it. And God, the, the, the smoke came down over the tabernacle, and, and God spoke out of the smoke and said, Miriam and Aaron and Moses, come to the tabernacle, and, and I've got something to say. And so they went there. And God said to Aaron and Miriam, come here. And God said, you know... I speak to prophets through visions and dreams, but Moses is special. When I speak to Moses, I speak face to face. You should not have spoken against Moses. Yeah. And he left. Yeah. Yeah. He left. And when he left, they looked at Miriam, and Miriam was covered with leprosy. God punished her, didn't he? Remember what leprosy is? We've talked about it already. Leprosy is a bad disease. God gave her leprosy. And Aaron cried out and said, Moses, pray for us that, that Miriam doesn't die. And Moses prayed to God, and God took Miriam's leprosy away. But he said, she has to stay outside the camp for seven days until she's completely clean. And so the whole camp of Israel, all two million people, they could have been heading toward the promised land, right? right. But could they go? Yeah. They had to wait. They had to wait for seven days until Miriam was completely cleansed of her leprosy. Now, today we have learned how complaining angers the Lord. It displeases Him, and He punishes it. And we should learn that we should not complain. When we complain, when we complain against our parents, we're complaining against God. Because God gave us our parents. Right? It's rebellion. When we complain, when we um, complain about what God has given us, we're complaining against God. He's provided so much for us, and we but when we complain. Other people hear it, and it's contagious, doesn't it? Complaining spreads. And what is the way to get rid of complaining? I said at one time, what is the way to get rid of complaining? What? Being thankful. That's right. When things are going bad, and you don't, and you and you want to complain, you need to think of something that God gave you, and praise Him, and thank Him for that. Thanking and praising takes care of complaining. So let's remember that. Later on today, I don't know what, but later on today, something is going to happen and you're going to say, and you need to stop your mouth and thank God for something and praise Him instead of complaining. Okay, let's remember that today.